Well, that certainly happened. Bruins lose 6-5 to the Pittsburgh Penguins after being down 5-2 at one point. Uh, th welcome back down into the den. Uh, my God. Who, who would have expected that we were going to... Uh, that... Uh, people were going to be hitting the over before the first period even ended. Before before we were even, like, halfway through the first period. Actually, that's not true. Before even 15 minutes through the first period. My god. Insa insane first period. But before we even get to the first period, we have, we have, a, returning, uh, we have a returning player. Matt Patra. Back from the... Uh, back from World Juniors... And he tonight was not really that. Uh, he didn't really make too much of a difference tonight. I'm I'm sorry to say it. He didn't really uh, make, make any difference. And, and let's and I'm gonna be honest. The same can be said for pretty much every single young guy, uh, as well as pretty much the as well as pretty much the entire fourth line. Monty just loves bringing out the. Uh, the blunder in the middle of, uh, of games, and where does it get it? Uh, where does it get us? Well, it's not a uh, well, it's not always a good thing to try uh, to try new things. But what's also not a good thing, and this is admittedly going to be a good chunk of the video. So, oh, uh, I I'm not gonna put a timestamp. Uh, actually, I'll put a timestamp in the in the description of one. And the stop uh, of when this rant is over. This this is gonna be out. This is gonna be about ESPN and uh, and how them acquiring the rights to broadcast NHL games is uh, is undeniably awful. You ready? Ready. Let's go. When the NHL struck a deal with the ESPN to uh, uh, for four hundred million dollars every single year until two thousand twenty eight to. Uh, to lend the broadcast rights of over a thousand NHL games every single year to ESPN, I was uh, I was a little bit uh, uh, conflicted on it, and now I and now I think enough time has passed to where I think it's a uh, to where I think we can all agree that it is an undeniably awful thing. 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 The main port the main part of my frustration with it is. Is the fact that it just completely uh, just, uh, just truncates the uh, it's uh, it's the entire market for uh, for regional sports networks. Thanks. You know, a lot of people will complain about Nesson's broadcast and about how Jack Edwards and Andy Brickley are such homers, but at the same time, that's the point of a regional sports network is to have uh, is to have a broadcast uh, crew specific to your game to have. To have people specifically covering your game, who are uh, who are going to have who are going to uh, provide special attention to your team, and by uh, it, it it's essentially the it, it is the equivalent of uh, of the Walmart coming in into your town and uh, and putting the mom and pop up shop out of business. Yes. Yes. yes, it's more ubiquitous. Yes, it's more. Uh, yes, uh, it's it's more accessible. Except for the fact that it actually it's not really that accessible because uh, it's not really as accessible because doesn't uh, because it's part of the Disney Plus bundle, which means uh, it's having to pay for yet another streaming, which means it's having to pay for uh, more streaming services. Then you're probably gonna uh, you're probably gonna uh, spend a in a couple of uh, a couple of times. Uh, uh, like a couple of hours a month, uh, watch uh, watching anything on them, and then uh, and then go about your day. Hey, hey, but but since it's in the uh, but uh, yes, it's more ubiquitous and yes, it's more accessible. But at the same time, um, not only is it uh, completely, not only is it uh, just devastating to the to the not not only is it just devastating to to various organizations or across the United States it's and in Canada for uh, dedicated to dedicated to this regionality but also oh well, if you're gonna 
if you're gonna mess this up, if you're gonna mess up so many people's lives it's by doing their job, but uh, by doing their job for them, at least do it well during the entire broadcast of this game. Not only were there uh, just long periods of no one saying anything, which is beyond frustrating. People talk about Jack Edwards not uh, like not saying anything for uh, for a while. Well, uh, uh, but in real, uh, but like Jack could uh, Jack could put together a much more compelling broadcast than this. Yes, yes. But not. But that was like the least of. Of uh, the worries, including the fact, in uh, which isn't to mention the fact that uh, during this broadcast they ended up having uh, technical difficulties in the uh, in the booth, uh, that uh, that forced the game into complete silence. Other than what was on the ice, yes, yes, that's almost beside the point. That's pretty much beside uh, the point. The main point, uh, but but like in addition to that, there was also the constant. The constant and visual glitching. Every like every forty-five seconds to a minute, it the screen would just pixelate and discolor, uh, uh, as if you were getting uh, one of those error uh, error messages on uh, on your TV. Uh, uh, it was frustrating. It was frustrating and nauseating to watch, uh, and. And for the love of God, I cannot wait until this, this contract that uh, the S, that ES uh, that the NHL has with ESPN is over. I cannot wait for 2028 in that uh, in that uh, in that case. I mean, I can't wait for 2028 for a multitude of reasons, but uh, but that is one of the main reasons why I can't wait for 2028. Rant over. On with the video. We're not even a minute into this game before uh, before this beautiful bastard. Uh, pots one on a uh, on a good rebound uh, on a juicy rebound from uh, from a pass and knock shot, uh, it, and that was basically the last of, uh, of the optimism I had for uh, for the night, it, because for the rest of the game, the Pittsburgh Penguins just completely destroyed us on defense. Not a single defenseman in in on the Bruins tonight had a good game. McAvoy. Did not really have a good game. Shattenkirk did not have a good game. Um, um, freaking Lindholm did not have a good game. Um, um, Mason Lorai and uh, and Matt Grizzlick tonight were were Tweedledee and Tweedledum with how uh, with how dumb they were, with how bad they were. And what's weird is the best defenseman in tonight that we had was Brandon Carlo. Not only did he score, but he was like the only person putting in effort. Like that, uh, like the goal that uh, Jake Gensel scored on that two on and one. The only reason why that was a two on one was because it was everybody on the uh, was because everybody on the Bruins uh, played way too far up, and Carlo was the only player who got there, who got back fast enough to have uh, to have even even remotely a chance of uh, stopping it. I still I still think that he should have uh, done the layout method, but that probably would have. Uh, ended up with a, uh, but considering how close that was to, is uh, to, is uh, to the net, I could see, uh, I could see Swayman, in in getting injured there. Speaking of Swayman, he didn't really have, uh, he didn't really have an amazing night tonight, but, uh, uh, but far from, uh, but far from terrible. I I, I truly think that uh, tonight it was just the defense letting the Bruins down. It was was the defense letting, uh, letting uh, uh letting. Ying Swayman down. About five minutes later, a, uh, a puck battle across uh, on the end boards uh, it squeaks out to Crystal Tang, and, and Grizzlick overcommits to the uh, Grizzlick cheats way too far to the uh, uh, up uh, and leaves Drew O'Connor completely uh, completely unmanned, and uh, and that ends up tying the game um, at one. We're only five minutes uh, it's into the game. Second goal the Bruins let up uh, was just a uh, was just a weird uh, ricochet, uh, but at the same time it was going so slow that on uh, that uh, that that was one that was probably the first goal that Sweat um, and was like yeah I need to have that it was go it was going slow enough that he could have made a kick save there it was it was frustrating but 
I really don't know if he could have. I really don't know if he saw it. I really hope that he did. I really hope you did, Swayman. Eh, eh, Swayman. But don't sit. Eh, but don't sit eh, tight too quickly, eh, in Pittsburgh, because because eh, you know what happens next. Eh, eh, Geeky gets a eh, puck eh, out eh, out to the defenseman. Defenseman. Eh, everybody cheats away from eh, cheats away from Pasternak, and Pasternak is. Pasternak is basically Ovechkin, is basically Prime Ovechkin, in which he has a really good, uh, he has a really good tendency of just com of just becoming completely invisible right when he needs to, because everybody cheats away from him, and then, uh, uh, and then, and he gets set up right uh, with a really good pass from uh, from the blue line, and Nedeljkovic comes out way too far. Uh, it comes out oh, way too far to uh, to challenge it instead of you know just poke checking it. it you know that that's always an option. Just poke check it, my guy. Uh, you you use the stick enough. You've uh, I'm if I'm not mistaken, you've scored two goals in the is uh, in the AHL. Well, so you know it's not like you're uh, so you know it's not like you're not uh, you don't know how to use your goalie stick. Like maybe you only know how to use your goalie stick when in going for goalie goals. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but man, this, uh, uh, yeah, Nadalkovich comes out too far, Poster, uh, Poster just, uh, just takes it out a little bit and, uh, and puts it behind him. Two, uh, two, two game. Next goal that happens is the, uh, is the Gensel goal. I've already gone over that one. And, and then we get another really bad defensive breakdown in our own zone, uh, uh leading to a really you know, weird angle that, uh, that Swayman has to save from and he can't. And make it four two going into the going into the first intermission. Man, this game this game sucked in the first. It's uh, and then it gets to five two, oh because of you guessed it, defensive breakdowns. And look, the refs didn't really help us out uh, uh, too much here. There were uh, uh, there were some calls that were complete bullcrap, uh, but. Uh, and some things that probably should have gotten called, but I mean that's that's every game. I, I am uh, I I will stand pat that uh, that honestly officiating shouldn't play into your uh, should not play too much into uh, whether or not a team deserved to win. In my in my eyes, both teams messed up enough to where uh, to where neither team really deserved it, uh, but. Uh, but Pittsburgh messed up up a little bit less, uh, except for this man. You know what's one of the you know what's one of my favorite accomplishments on the side of boxes of March Munch. This one right here. Most shorthanded goals in Boston history, and he adds to that legacy tonight, man. Mimicking the sh mimicking the shooting angle that uh, that Lars Eller had on that uh, on that uh, four two goal, oh, oh, Geeky makes it five three uh, with a really really uh, sharp angle that that again Nadelkovich just can't uh, just can't save if if Swayman isn't making that God knows uh, God knows, N knows Nadelkovich isn't and just before the second period ends and. And we got three got we got three guys that uh, is is out towards the set uh, out towards the center to the uh, to the left wing. And pasta's coming off. Someone else is coming on. And, and there's not much uh, there's not much attention being, being focused on the right wing. You know what happens there? Uh, you get a really clean shooting angle if your name is Brandon Carlo. And man, he just uh, and man, he channels his inner there's uh, uh, a Dano Chara and just blasts it. So anyway, I started blasting, and that is the five four goal that gives me a little bit of hope. It gives me a little bit of hope. After all, the last time we uh, after all the last time we had uh, had come back uh, from down three uh, goals was against Pittsburgh, but uh. Mm, mm -mm. Not tonight. 
Now, uh, now into the third period, uh, Pittsburgh's on the power play, but it doesn't matter because uh, because like I said, most most shorthanded goals in uh, in Boston history. Uh, uh, Co Coil with the puck and make it the neutral zone. Four checks it up to Marshan. Marshan just makes an absolute pylon out of uh, out of Chris Letang. It. Abs men's men's is just <laughs> men's is just doing the penguin right there. Doesn't know where to go. Doesn't know. Uh, doesn't know where to turn. And you know what happens there? Martian just takes the puck from him. Uh, just uh, just dangle it through his legs, eggs, eggs, and passes under him um, like. Uh, like he's a uh, like he's just a little guy, just a little guy, ooh, little guy, and he uh, uh, and th like thirty six year old Brad Marsh. I did not check his age. Thirty five years old. I'm sorry. Thirty five. Thirty five year old Brad Marsh and makes, I think older, I think older, Chris Letang, look like a pylon, and and. Uh, and gets the first shorthanded goal of the season for the Boston Bruins. Uh, which, by the way, we had the best uh, penalty kill unit in the entire league. Why is it taking it? Uh, why did it take us this long to sh to score a shorthanded goal? For reference's sake, Calgary, Philadelphia, and St. Louis—three teams that I would all categorize as worse than the Bruins—have all scored nine shorthanded goals this season. Each one of them has scored nine shorthanded goals this season. And we've only scored one. What's wrong with that? What What is wrong with this picture? Anyway, in the uh, anyway, less than uh, a little bit later, uh, uh, a really, really kind of weak holding call on McAvoy leads to a face-off in the Bruins zone, and uh, Pittsburgh wins it. Uh, Pittsburgh wins the face-off, and... And Crosby scores, uh, scores another goal. Which, by the way, I think that's the main. Re I think that honestly should have been the main in indicator that told me that we were gonna lose this game. Not the fact, not the fact that our defense was breaking down. Not anything like that. The fact that we weren't winning at the faceoff dot. If you aren't, if you aren't giving them hell. Oh, at the first jump at make eh, at the puck, then eh, then you are fighting a losing battle. The reason, part of the reason why, eh, eh, part of the reason that eh, that led to Patrice Bergeron's insane consistency was the fact that he was electric at the faceoff dot. Eh. For like five consecutive seasons, he was in the top. He was the best at in faceoff percentage in the entire league. And you, I think you have to go back to like 2012-2013 to find a single to find the last season in which he in which he played games and wasn't in the top five of pe of faceoff percentage. And now that we don't have that. What the fuck? We're we're uh, we can't win off the uh, we can't win off the jump, and we uh, and and as a result we are fighting a losing battle. Well, huh. Crosby Crosby scores. We spend the rest of the we spend the rest of the fit, uh, third period uh, trying to make it up with uh, by uh, while only playing nine forward. Or uh, while only playing nine forwards because Monty decided. And yeah, we're not gonna play the. Uh, the fourth line, which I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Yes, the fourth line is not very good. The fourth line, let's let's be honest, it's not very good right now. But you know what the fourth line is really good at? Providing a little bit of breathing room for the top nine. And uh, and uh, and honestly, a little bit of. A little bit of breathing room can go a long way, Monty. It can go a long way. 
And so, we lose the game. We lose the game because we can't entirely get out of our own way. We can't... Uh, Pittsburgh did not really want to win this game either, but, uh, but man, we really did not want to win this one. And this... I don't, I don't want to give the Bruins a mulligan for this one. I don't, I, the Bruins do not deserve a mulligan for this one. You, you really, you really don't. You really don't deserve a mulligan for this one. But I still kind of want, no, no, I'm not going to give it to him. I'm not going to give it to him. So, that's it. That's it. Thank you all so much for watching. And, uh, I'm going to go to sleep. Sorry for sorry for yawning. Uh, 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 Twitch and uh, Twitch and Way and Waymouthers podcast uh, are in the description. They have a new episode up. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, uh, not fantastic. I will see you guys next time. Take care.